Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, and we are going to read Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Let me read verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise unto thee a prophet from amidst of thee, of thy brethren like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken according to all that thou desireth of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And the Lord say unto me, They have well spoken, that which they have spoken. I'll raise them a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and I'll put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. That's verse 18. Can you turn with me again? Then we come back to Deuteronomy. Turn with me to the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 3. Acts of Apostles chapter 3. I read from verse 22. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you, it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear the prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many have spoken, have like foretold of these days. Let us pray. Our Father, we pray that you may speak to us through your word. That we may be encouraged by you, O Lord, our God. And that thy name may be glorified. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I want us to, we have been looking, the series which we have been looking, we have been seeing the Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament and speaking to us in a great matter of salvation. We've done from Genesis to Numbers and today we are in Deuteronomy and we are going to look at the Lord Jesus Christ here. I've given it a title Why You Need a Prophet Like Moses and I like it that because immediately it applies to us. I'm just giving you a title, a prophet like Art Moses. Why we need a prophet like Moses? 
You know very well that the book of Deuteronomy is a repetition of the law or further explanation of the law as people are preparing to enter into the promised land. And so Moses expounded to them the law and that which the Lord will speak to them. He just talked to them and told them they need not to be like other nations that they are going to find there. The nations that worship idols, the nations that do not put their trust in God. Moses will not be able to be with them in the promised land, you know. He will have to die or be taken this side of the sea. He not go with them. At this particular time, he gave them this promise and he told them the promise which we have seen is that the Lord will raise another prophet like him. The Lord thy God will raise unto thee a prophet from your midst. From the midst of thee, of the brethren like unto me, unto him shall you hearken. And here Moses is telling them the need of a prophet. And he's saying the Lord, God, will bring him up. He's not a prophet of his own choosing. He's not a prophet of his own calling. He's a prophet that is chosen by the Lord, God himself. This prophet will come among his brethren in their midst. So this a prophet will be a prophet that will be among them in their midst. He will not be an alien. He will not be an angel. He will be raised among their midst. He's their midst and among his brethren. And the Bible says they should hearken unto him. That is repeated again in verse 18. Now God himself, Moses telling them what God will do. And in verse 18, the Lord, God himself, is now speaking to them. I'll raise, raise them up, a prophet from among their brethren. You see there, that, that word again, among their brethren. Like unto thee. I'll put my word. So the Lord putting the word in his mouth. And he shall speak to them. All that I shall command him. Not what he will come up with. And dear friends. Eventually this one lead us. When you read to the Acts. Acts tell us that this prophet. That Moses was speaking to. About. Was none other than. The Lord Jesus Christ himself. And soon we shall see. Why the Lord Jesus Christ. Fit the bill. He's the one Moses is seeing. A prophet. prophet you know. They, see, they saw a glimpse of glory. And they were afraid. And they said no 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 Moses. We don't want to go there. In that mountain we don't want to go. We need somebody. You speak on our behalf. And God told him, them you have spoken right. I raise for you a prophet. You are not able to approach me the way you ought to approach me. But I'll raise one that will do that on your behalf. And dear friend, this one is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to give you that as we answer that question. Why do you need a prophet? And by the way, do you need a prophet? And by the way, if you are here, do you have a prophet? In our Reformed Baptist circles, if you read our Confession of Faith, which I think Pastor Wasso went with you through, 
there are three offices of Christ. Christ as a prophet, what we are going to see here. Christ as a king. A king like that of David. A king that rules, that reign, that protect, that guide his people. And also Christ as a priest. The one that offers sacrifices on behalf of his people. And the Lord Jesus Christ will remember we are told in his office as a priest, he offered himself as a sacrifice. He went with his own blood. And so, why do you need a prophet? Our dear friends, here is where we are going to see the Lord Jesus Christ here, number one. Why do we need him? Because of original sin. Because of original sin. We need a prophet that can mediate between us and God because of the original sin. When I talk of original sin, you know, it's not the first sin committed. In theology, original sin is not the first sin committed. No. In theology, the original sin means we are born sinners. Adam sinned and all of us are born with sin. No one here is born perfectly. We are born with bias. The bias we have in our nature is the biasness of sin. And so, because of original sin, we cannot approach God left to ourselves unless God comes with a way where, the, where a sinful people can approach a holy God. There is a gulf between you and God because of that original sin. And that's why you and me, we need a prophet. My dear friends, that's the reality of that original sin. Men don't want to say that they are sinners. Men don't want to think that they are bad. But the fact that is that you are born, my friend, a sinner. And without a prophet, you are doomed. Without somebody who can stand between you and God, you are doomed. And I want to elaborate it. Original sin has affected everyone. You remember my famous quote. Children are not little angels. They are little sinners. No one teach their children how to be angry. They are born with anger. Every parents do every best they can to train their children in the right ways. But somehow, the bad just find ourselves we find ourselves with doing those bad and evil things. So we are corrupt at the beginning. And therefore, the need of a prophet. And my friend, that's why I want to plead with you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ if you know that you are a sinner by nature. But not only that, we also needed a, uh, a prophet because of the law. The law says the soul that sin shall die. The law says, sometimes called the Decalogue, Ton commandment, do and live. And so remember the Ten Commandments that I was preaching here. And again there, we have a problem. None of us can keep the law. The law does not require <coughs> that you keep it 99%. The law requires that you keep it 100%. And so none of us has kept the law. 
we have broken the law of God. And the law says, if you break one, you have broken all of them. If you kept all the entire law, but only you break one, then, dear friend, you have broken all of the law. And so, we have something we call actual sin. The actual sin simply means that we have broken the law. We have not kept the standard that God has set. And so, I need again for a prophet. Someone that is able to keep the law on our behalf. Not breaking even a single one of them. And that's none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. What a great promise the Lord is giving in Deuteronomy here. I'll raise a prophet like unto Moses. Unto Moses. Like unto Moses. Moses, when people were crying in Egypt, they were helpless. They were in bondage. They could not redeem themselves. They were under the grip of Pharaoh. And they could not come out at any time. God raised up Moses. And he told Moses, go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go so that they may worship me. And you remember, Pharaoh's hand was hardened. And the Lord did miracles after miracles after miracles after miracles. And the plague after plague after plague, Pharaoh's heart was hard. But God vindicated himself. You remember that day that he told them to sacrifice a lamb and put the blood on the doorpost and there was a death in Egypt and there was cry from the house of Pharaoh to the smallest man in the land. And that day he told the children of Israel, go and worship thy God. And the Lord God delivered his people with outstretched arms from Egyptian captivity. That was a physical captivity. And the same, law, the same God is saying, we needed a prophet. A prophet that will redeem us from the power of sin. A prophet like unto Moses that will rescue us from the bondage of sin, that can rescue you from that slavery market of sin. And I tell you, sin is powerful. Sin know no king. He doesn't know even priest. Sin has captured all men. And sin is a very bad master. Oh, Apostle Paul gave us a glimpse of it. He said, when I want to do good, I find myself doing that which I don't want to do. I say, oh, who will deliver me from this body of sin? And say, thank be to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, this, the slavery of sin is worse than Egyptian captivity. Remind me about the doctrines, a doctrine that we call the doctrine of grace. The doctrine of grace remind us the number one word in the doctrine of grace is normally man's total depravity. It doesn't mean that man is wicked as he can be, no. Man's total depravity means that sin has affected every area of our lives. Sin has affected our emotions. We desire wrong things. Sin has affected our minds. The cuddle mind is immunity against God. A carnal mind is immunity against God. And it says the God of this world has blinded the understanding of our ungodly and believers. You remember that famous verse in Romans chapter 3. There is no one that understandeth. You expect that man will understand God. You know, man is able to understand his surrounding. Man is able to surround his nature. My friend, I was listening to that friend of mine, Dr. Kutu Weiss. He was saying, if you look at the world, you see as if the world was created for man to understand. And he was saying, why mathematics us, uh, uh, work? God created man that is able to understand his surrounding. And man was created without wings, man now fly. Using man has gone to moon and understand the nature and everything. But dear friends, 
Man goes to moon and come back and says there's no God. The understanding of man has been blinded. And man needs a prophet. A prophet who can speak to man. And our standing can be opened. And we can see the glorious God. And the glorious gospel. Sin has affected every aspect of our being. Our understanding. Our emotions. Our conscience. You know the conscience? The conscience is the ringing bell. That tells you this is wrong. This is good. You try, this is wrong, this is good. But even that has been affected by the, by the fall. You can sin again and again and again and again and again. Such that your conscience no longer condemns you. At the beginning, it's used to condemn you. But you have done something bad again and again and again and again and again and again. It no longer bothers you. That's what sin has done. That's what sin has done. Conscious. The best thing a man has is fallen. And sometimes also the conscious is not supposed to condemn you, but it condemns. When you are not supposed to be condemned, then the conscious condemns you for nothing. That's why you need a prophet. That's why I need a prophet. But what is the core of our being? The core of our being is our hearts. Jeremiah tells us the heart of man is deceitful above everything. It's corrupt. It's wicked. The core, the center of man. The Lord Jesus Christ said, not what go in that uh, corrupt a man, but what come out. And then he mentioned, out of the heart comes all these wicked things and talk foolishness. immorality. All those things they come from the heart and they defile a man. And dear friends, we need a prophet. A prophet that can transform our hearts. A prophet that can cleanse our hearts from all wickedness. From all sin. And dear friends, you know your heart. You know your heart. You know that it's corrupt. You know that is fallen. Ah, may we have a proper view of sin. A sin that knows that the wrong we do is not just against men, but the wrong we are doing is against God. May our theology about sin be right. That sin is wickedness and evil against God, not man. And you need a prophet, dear friends. It leads you that you need a prophet. If you know your heart well, maybe you don't know your heart. Your heart is fallen. The Puritans, they used to say, even when we pray and we shed tears, they are not good enough. They are not good enough. You know that hymn writer got it. Not the labors of my hands can fulfill thy lost demands. Cool my Zeal, no respite, no. Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save, and thou alone. We must reach a point where we need a prophet. Everything we do is tainted with sin. Do you know philosophers? The bright people, they were the great thinkers. Do you know what they say? To err is human. So they say no perfection. No perfection. And that's why the need of Jesus Christ to be our prophet. He is the perfect one who never sinned in his thoughts, in his word, in his action. Who the father could declare, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. He's our prophet. 
He said, you are a prophet. Again, another hymn writer say, we sang it, my hope is built on nothing less. He said, I dare not trust even my sweetest frame. I cannot trust my sweetest frame. I wholly lean on Jesus' name. So this morning, I'm, this afternoon, I'm pleading with you. You need a prophet not to lean on yourself, but lean on Christ Jesus. If you're not saved, this morning you can cast yourself to Christ. And then when God look at you, he'll never, not see you. He'll see your faith in Christ. You are considered righteous not because you are righteous in yourself. No, 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 my friend. We must trust the righteousness of another. And the righteousness of another is than Jesus Christ. The throne will tell us we needed a prophet. A prophet to take us to Canaan. A prophet who will lead us to that prom promised land. And that prophet is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. The son of the living God is able to help us. The need of a prophet. And dear friends, we need him. As believers also you need him. He's your prophet. He's your mediator. I'll come to that later. As my time also is almost gone. Dear friends, we need a prophet like unto Moses. A prophet that delivers like unto Moses. Not exactly like Moses. He's, he supersedes Moses. Moses was not able to go to promised land. You know the name Joshua means God is my salvation. God, so Moses, you know, had Pentateuch, the law. And the law could not take people there. They needed a Joshua, a savior, to make them get to the promised land. And Joshua is the one who eventually took them to the promised land. And dear friends, we need one that can lead us to God. A man from our brethren, you know the Lord Jesus Christ was fully God and fully man. From our brethren. He'll come from our brethren. He was born of Virgin Mary. You know his conception was a miracle. God became flesh and made his dwelling among us. John will say, and we have seen his glory. As the only glory of the begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. Dear friends, we need this prophet to help us deal with the problem of sin. The one that will lead us until we see God. When we stand there, dear friends, and see him there. He's the one only we, comp we proclaim and pronounce. And dear friends, some people will tell you you need a prophet. You don't need prophets. Oh, this human. This human prophets. You don't need them. Some people have called themselves prophets. They are not. Some people have read this and say the, the Moses was speaking for them. Like when I was my former sect, when I was a raw, another prophet like me was a dongo mango. Yeah. Hey, was a dongo mango. And when you go to the war followers, another prophet like me, it's a war. It's Jesus. Well, what do they do with the Acts of Apostles? It's Jesus. When you go to Islam, they say it's Muhammad. No! He said that they are Jesus. In fact, in that chapter 3, I was reading Acts chapter 3. It's the healing of the lame man. The lame man is healed. And Sanhedrin are not happy. They arrest the apostle. They tell them, don't preach in the name of this man. And he say, the, the man that was supposed to come is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that God say, arrest another prophet. A prophet that if you repent, you are... You, you are forgiven. A prophet that when you trust in him, you are converted, you are changed. You become a new creation. The all is past, dear friends. These prophets proclaiming they need to close all those camps, whether they be in the mountain, whether they have built their house in mountain, or in the plain area, wherever those prophets are, they need to close and know we have only one prophet that we need to listen to that will guide us to heaven. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But you people like the prophets. Because you have money. Go and give them your money. <laughs> They'll take you to Shakahola. These are the prophets. They take you to Shakahola. 
and they make sure that they finish your family. Which kind of prophet is that? They clear all your family, your children, your grandchildren. The lineage is gone. We need only one prophet, the Lord Jesus Christ, dear friends. Don't stone me, but if you stone me, it's okay. If you stone me, it's okay. But the prophet that we need that deal with our greatest problem, man's greatest problem I've told you over and again is sin. Dear friends, sin will take you to hell if you don't deal, do anything about sin. Sin turns Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Sin turns Lord's wife into a stone. Some of you do love history. I used, to, I used to love history, even though I've forgotten many. Do you know Rome? Rome was a very powerful nation. Roman Empire. You see them, they say all road leads to Rome. The roads that Roman Empire built, some are still in the UK. Do you know why Rome fell? Immorality, corruption, and laziness. Sin. Rome was conquered by barbarians. Father, somebody called Jerome. He cried when Rome being conquered. He said, a city which conquered the whole world, it is itself being conquered. That's how bad sin is. And if you are not careful, sin will take people to hell, dear friends. A place where there will be gnashing of teeth and cries. You need a prophet. Another one will come like me, Moses said, don't lose, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope, the Lord will raise another. And Peter tells us, he raised him. He raised him on that day, he raised him. Another prophet that lead us, that is able to guide us, that is able to show us who God is like. Hmm. Say I have been with him. Whosoever have seen me has seen the Father. Ah, I wish I was the one saving. I could have grabbed some of you today and leave this place saved. But I don't have that power. What I can do is to tell you, go to him and ask him, I need you, Lord Jesus. Have mercy on me. I need a prophet. There's nothing I cannot do with my sin. And he said, even though your sin be red as scarlet, he'll wash them to be white as snow. Another prophet like me, Moses said. And he told them that they listen to him. I don't know whether we are listening to Christ. People have refused to come to Christ for salvation. They are still rebelling. And some of us believers, we still think that sin is good. And some of you, when you want to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you think that now you walk alone. No, he's our prophet. He's our only prophet. He's the one that we need. He's the one like Moses. He's the one who will take us there. I long for that day when he'll come as king of kings and lord of lords. Ah, when there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. When the dead will be resurrected. Ah, when their hope will have come, they come out of the grave. Some will be found alive, being changed. And we shall see him as our prophet, the true representative, the one through whom we can be adopted and become true families of God. Oh, dear friends, oh, may you cherish him, may you love him, may you be at the center. We as pastors, we pray for you. But I'm not your mediator. Once you have seen me pointing, telling you that I'm a mediator, please vote me out. Point another elder. Vote me out. We are not mediators. The only mediator between God and man is Christ Jesus. If you remember that, 
First Timothy chapter 5, verse 2. There's one God and one mediator between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself. That's the one I'm endorsing you to. May the Lord bless you all. Let us pause there. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you very much for giving us a day like this, Lord. And especially as we think of your office as the prophet. And we need it. And we still need you. Because we are sinful people. Yet you, the Father, separated you for himself, even before the foundation of the world. And are you able, Lord, to speak to us truth of, the truth of God's word? And you are the only one who is able to reveal to us the Father in a clear way. Reveal him even in our hearts this day. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing the last hymn which will be number 202. How sweet the name of Jesus sound in our believers here. 202. How sweet the name of Jesus sound in a believer. Can you sing it meditating and thinking about those words? <laughs> 